Elon Musk is not a very happy person right now, and that's because he is hemorrhaging money as we speak with major companies like IBM, Lionsgate, Apple, Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, Paramount Global, NBC Universal, Comcast, Sony, and Ubisoft all announcing that they are pulling ads from Twitter. Now, this advertiser boycott comes in response to Elon Musk endorsing a viciously anti-Semitic and xenophobic conspiracy theory from this person who wrote, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest shit now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing realizations that those hordes of minorities that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. You want the truth said to your face? There it is. Now, Elon Musk replied saying, you have said the actual truth. Now, I'm sure that most of you are already familiar with this deeply anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, but if you're not, let me tell you who else promoted this. Quote, the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society likes to bring invaders in that kill our people. Screw your optics, I'm going in. Those were the last words posted online by Robert Bowers before he massacred worshippers at Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue in 2018. It was the single deadliest anti-Semitic attack in American history. In previous postings, Bowers explained the grievances that led him to commit mass murder. He shared meme after meme asserting that Jews were conspiring to flood the country with brown people in order to oppose and displace the white race. Quote, open your eyes, declared one. Quote, it's the filthy evil Jews bringing the filthy evil Muslims into the country. And as it turns out, the world's richest man basically believes this too. Now, to suggest that this was Elon Musk's mask off moment would be wrong because it's not the first time that he's endorsed conspiratorial white supremacist rhetoric. For example, in response to someone whining about the burning of Robert E. Lee's Confederate monument, writing, literally my ancestor, we carry the Lee names as a first middle in my family. While I didn't need a direct insulting gesture to tell me that my kind is hated and many seek our extinction, the implicit cues were strong enough. I appreciate this image making it absolutely clear. Musk responded to that saying they absolutely want your extinction. Now, as of today, after commenting that Media Matters is pure evil, I'll tell you why he thinks this in a moment, Matt Binder points out that he's now possibly dabbling in Pizzagate conspiracy theories as well. But to be clear, the straw that broke the camel's back for advertisers was the anti-Semitic tweet that he responded to, endorsing that vicious conspiracy theory. Now, he responded to accusations that he's anti-Semitic by saying, this past week, there were hundreds of bogus media stories claiming that I am anti-Semitic. Nothing could be further from the truth. I wish only the best for humanity and a prosperous and exciting future for all. Wow, that's very convincing. I guess he's just going to deny that he endorsed an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Now, He's going a little bit further, to be fair, in order to prove that he's committed to combating anti-Semitism on the platform. He is cracking down on Palestinian political speech, not anti-Semitism. He writes, as I said earlier this week, decolonization from the river to the sea and similar euphemisms necessarily imply genocide. Clear calls for extreme violence are against our terms of service and will result in suspension. Now, after he made this announcement, from the river to the sea started trending almost immediately, much like Cis did after he called that a slur and subsequently tried to ban that word too. Now, I've talked about this before, but from the river to the sea isn't inherently anti-Semitic. When Palestinians use it, however, they're effectively calling for freedom from oppression and a peaceful coexistence between Arabs and Israelis. So the context does matter, even if this is a little bit more complicated. But let's just be really charitable to Elon Musk for a moment, even though we don't have to be. And let's assume that he just wants to be overly sensitive to any phrases that can be perceived as anti-Semitic after his little oopsie. Fine. Wouldn't you take it a step further and ban all of the Nazis and white supremacists on your platform? Isn't that the most effective way to eliminate anti-Semitism from Twitter? Well, Maybe, but these are the same people who also pay him $8 a month to get an algorithmic boost, which is why we're all seeing more Nazism and white supremacy and transphobia. So if he were to ban these folks who are paying them money, he's taking money out of his own pocket. But because he won't take action against actual anti-Semitism and because he engages in anti-Semitic conspiracy theories himself, that's why advertisers are pulling out. 
because he's very clearly not committed to combating anti-Semitism. But the story somehow gets even stupider because Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, actually applauded Elon Musk for this move, saying this is an important and welcome move by Elon Musk. I appreciate his leadership in fighting hate. Now, I just want to pause for a moment and appreciate the absurdity of this situation. The head of the ADL is praising Elon Musk, of all people, for his leadership in fighting hate on Twitter, of all places, in 2023, in November of 2023. It feels like we're living in the upside down, like nothing is real because it's too stupid to be believable. Now, it's not like Jonathan Greenblatt is unaware of Elon Musk's previous endorsement of a vicious anti-Semitic conspiracy theory because a day earlier, he literally condemned it, writing on Twitter, at a time when anti-Semitism is exploding in America and surging around the world, it is indisputably dangerous to use one's influence to validate and promote anti-Semitic theories. So, according to the ADL, you can validate an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory one day, but the very next day, literally, you can be hailed for your leadership in fighting hate. Make it make sense. It's impossible. Now, this isn't necessarily too surprising considering the ADL's sudden desire to, I guess, destroy their credibility or what's left of it, all in an effort to protect Israel no matter what. So the organization has been focused on defaming student supporters of Palestinian human rights and painting them as terrorist sympathizers while urging colleges to investigate them. But meanwhile, they're giving actual stochastic terrorists like Chaya Raichik a pass by temporarily removing her from their glossary of extremism and hate after she threatened to sue them. Now, at the time that I record this video, they still haven't reinstated her. And this is also bizarre to me because it seems as if the ADL is currently spending more time going after student protesters than actual Nazis and actual hate mongers. And they're even willing to give Elon Musk a pass after he literally, just last week, spread a vicious anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that was used by the shooter that murdered people at the Tree of Life synagogue. But so long as Elon Musk is signaling support for Israel by censoring pro-Palestinian speech, I guess that he's acceptable by the standards of the ADL now. Just such a deeply unserious organization, which is sad because they do do some good work. But I mean, this recent turn is just embarrassing because if you are applauding Elon Musk of all people after he said that, then you have no credibility because that is dangerous as they recognized. Now, in addition to doubling down on censorship on Twitter, Elon Musk is trying to silence media matters too by threatening them with a thermonuclear lawsuit because he believes they're threatening free speech on Twitter by manipulating advertisers into fleeing by documenting the rise of hate speech on the platform. Now, he ironically ends this long post by saying stand with X to protect free speech, which is so fucking funny. Now, it's true that Media Matters does frequently write about the proliferation of hate speech on Twitter, but let's not forget that this latest round of advertiser boycotts is specifically because of Elon Musk's own words, not the hate that he's allowing on the platform. And furthermore, he's trying to silence Media Matters with legal intimidation. He is the one threatening free speech, not Media Matters. They're just saying what's happening. Now, he said he was going to file a lawsuit on Monday. It's now Monday, and at the time that I record this video, still no lawsuit, but we'll have to wait and see. However, some of his uh, right-wing buddies are trying to come to the rescue and bail him out amid this latest round of advertiser boycotts. For example, the Babylon Bee CEO, Seth Dillon, pledged $250,000 in advertising on Twitter, and Tim Pool pledged another $250,000 after Seth Dillon did. But that's not all, because Matt Bender of Mashable reports soon more right right-wing media figures and companies followed with pledges of their own, albeit much less than the amounts that Dylan and Paul were promising. Political commentator Benny Johnson, for example, pledged $50,000 in ad spending. Other right-wing creators like the quartering donut operator Gavin McInnes and Elijah Schaefer pledged smaller amounts ranging from $2,500 to $40,000. The controversial Andrew Tate, a manosphere influencer who has previously been charged with rape and human trafficking, pledged the largest amount, saying he'd give Musk $1 million per 
per month without even running ads for his own endeavors. As of publishing, a total of eight right-wing media figures and groups have pledged $1,627,500 in ad buys on X. That includes Tate's possibly unserious offer. In addition, the majority of those pledges are over the course of multiple months, so that amount is not per month. But get this, to compare to the amount X has lost from fleeing advertisers, Apple alone reportedly spends more than $100 million per year on X ads. Looking at it more broadly, advertising made up 90% of the $5.1 billion that then Twitter made in the year before Musk took over. Now, the reason why Bender thinks that Andrew Tate's pledge is unserious is because Romanian authorities said that he only had about $10 million in assets. And I say only, but that's still a lot, meaning that if he actually held true to this, he would give away the entirety of his wealth within a year. So obviously, I don't think that he's really committing to this. He's just virtue signaling for clout. But just stop for a moment and think about how pathetic these right-wing bootlickers are. They are all willing to donate money to a platform owned by the richest man on the planet, all in the name of of supporting free speech after he's demonstrated time and again that he's not actually committed to free speech. I mean, it'd be humorous if it wasn't so fucking pathetic. But listen, if you actually do care about free speech, and you should, there are much better places that you can put your money into. Free speech to Elon Musk literally just means free speech for white supremacists, transphobes, and Nazis. He isn't actually committed to protecting free speech. I think time and again, he has proven that. His actions indicate that that is the extent of his commitment to free speech, letting Nazis say what they want on the platform and get boosted by the algorithm. But fortunately for these dumbass grifters, that really is the only free speech that I think they care about. So I guess it works for them. Either way, I hope that the advertisers continue to flee. But understand that this is not the first time that advertisers have fled Twitter in mass. And I'm assuming that they will quietly resume advertising in a month or so once this all blows over until Elon Musk has another oopsie and they all collectively announce another pause from advertising. Listen, the true victory will be these advertisers leaving Twitter permanently. And I think that a sustained level of public shaming is necessary in order to make that a reality. But until then, we can at least enjoy the schadenfreude of the world's richest man losing more money because of his own hate and stupidity. Like everywhere there's glue, mama. you see them all the time. I mean, it's constant. Mama. My children are like, Mama, glue, 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 glue. I turn on mama. TV, there's glue in the background. Every TV show, news media, why? Glue, 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 glue. They're everywhere. Glue, 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 gl